Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can make your very own two-toned beanie using your knitting machine. If you wanted to make yours in one solid colour that is totally fine. You will be able to follow along with this tutorial. You just won't include the colour changes that we do along the way. You'll just continue in the same colour. But I'm going to show you how you can create this beautiful two-toned double brimmed pom-pom beanie on your knitting machine. To get started, what you're going to need is some waste yarn. You guys have seen me talk about waste yarn in some of my past videos. If you're not familiar with waste yarn and why we use it, don't worry, I will explain a little bit along the way, but it does serve a purpose, I promise. The main thing to consider with your waste yarn is make sure that it is a contrasting color to the yarn you are using for your beanie. So for instance, I'm using two colors for my beanie today. I've got this tan brownie color and then I've got this off-white cream natural color. And as you can see, this is my waist yarn, which is in a dark navy blue. So very contrasting color to these two colors, which is perfect. Now the yarn I'm using today is an Aran weight yarn. This is the Four Seasons Spot Saver USA style yarn from Spotlight. As you guys know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, this is my absolute favorite yarn. I absolutely love it. It does work quite well in the knitting machine as well, which is a plus. This is just in the color natural. I've then got this brown color that is a yarn I found in a mill end bag at Spotlight, so I do not know the exact yarn that this is, but it is a very similar weight to this. It's just in a bronzy, tanny, browny color. We will also need, of course, some scissors and a yarn needle. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is pop our row counter down to zero. I'm then going to take my waist yarn leaving a little bit of an end and just popping that in the middle there. And then we're gonna find pin number one and we are just going to cast on. If you aren't familiar with how to cast on, I will link my cast on video above so you can go and watch that before we get started. All right, now we're back to the start and we have casted on using our waist yarn. So I'm now just popping my yarn into the yarn guide and the tension gauge. And I'm now just gonna crank out about 10 rows with my waist yarn. Okay, so I finished cranking out my 10 rows with my waist yarn. I'm now gonna remove that from the tension gauge and the yarn guide and just pop it in the middle there. Now the yarn that you want to start with will be the color that you want to end up at the top of your beanie. So I will be starting with this cream color. You start with whatever color you want to end up at the top of your beanie. We are going to leave a fairly decent end in there just so we can use it at the end to sew our beanie together. So I wanna say leave about 20 inches or so. We then wanna take our yarn and thread it in under pin number one. So this is our last pin here. And just cranking until that pin is to the right of our yarn guide. We're then just threading that in through our yarn guide and in through our tension gauge. I'm also just going to reset my row counter here back to zero. We want to complete 40 rows with this color. So you can now just start cranking, remembering to take it really slowly for the first couple of rounds because your stitches will probably be a little bit loose. And we're just going to continue cranking for 40 rounds. Okay, so here I am at the end of my 40 rows. I'm now going to remove this yarn. You can cut it, but just make sure you leave a decent enough tail so you can sew it in. So I've just left probably about six or seven inches worth and just popping that into the middle of your machine. We're then taking our second color. This will be the color that sits at the bottom of our beanies. So the color that will be closest to your face. 
Again, we're gonna leave about a six or seven inch tail in the middle of our machine and we're just gonna go in and thread that in under pin number one, cranking until that pin is just to the right of our yarn guide and then threading that through the yarn guide and into our tension gauge. Now what I like to do here when we're changing colors is tie these two strands together. This is purely just so they do not come undone. I just do it loosely for now just to hold them in place while we're working and then I'll go back in later once we've finished our beanie and I will tighten those strands up. So just loosely tie them together for now so they don't come out undone while you're cranking and then later on we will go in and tighten them up. So now that we've attached our second colour, we're going to go ahead now and crank out another 50 rounds. Alrighty, here we are at the end of our 50 rounds with our second colour. We are now just removing this from the yarn guide and tension gauge. Again, leaving a six or seven inch tail and cutting our yarn. We can now put our secondary colour to the side because we won't need that anymore. We're now going back in with our first colour and we are joining that in as exactly the same way as we did with our other color change. Again, leaving a six or seven inch tail, going in under that first pin, cranking until it's just to the right, and then inserting that into our yarn guide and our tension gauge. Again, I am going to tie a loose knot in these two ends just to secure them while we're cranking. Again, we will go back and tighten this up later, so don't stress too much. It's just to make sure that it stays in one piece while you're cranking your work. Okay, so now we can go ahead and reset our row counter, and we are now cranking out another 40 rounds. So I will see you back here once we are done. Here I am at the end of my 40 rounds in my cream color. Now we're just removing that and popping that into the middle. We don't want to cut it yet just in case we need it. So just leave it attached for now. We're now taking our waste yarn again and we are going to finish off with that. So, whoops. Again, just going in under there, cranking a little bit and inserting that into our tension gauge and our yarn guide. And again, we're just going to crank out 10 rows using our waste yarn. All right, now we're finished with our waist yarn. We can remove that from the tension gauge in the yarn guide and just pop it into the middle there. We're now going to remove our beanie from our knitting machine. So all that is required is to just crank your handle until your beanie starts popping off of your machine. Just like that. So we can now move our machine to the side and we're just gonna lay our beanie out. Not that it really looks like a beanie at the moment, but you just wanna go in and stretch out those stitches just to make sure they're all nice and condensed because after being stretched out on your machine, you will notice that they look a little bit loose. But once you go in and stretch them out, they will all condense nicely. This is looking really, really good. So our next step is to fold our beanie in half, but going inside itself. So if you just grab it in the middle there somewhere and push that section up inside of it. And making sure it's nice and even. We don't want it to be twisted, so you just wanna make sure that it's all sitting nice and flat inside of each other. So I am pretty happy with that. Now what we want to do is to find the ends of our yarn that we left. Remember how I told you guys to leave a tail at the beginning? That's what we're trying to find. What we're gonna do now is go around and join 
the top of our beanie together. So what you're gonna do is take your yarn needle and thread our yarn through. We're then going to line up our beanie so the end on this end of our beanie and the end on this end of our beanie are pretty much together because we want to make sure that everything is nice and straight and nothing's twisted. So what we're now going to do is take our yarn needle and because we used the contrasting waist yarn you will be able to see that those stitches there are really really easy to see. So those creamy colored stitches that you can see there are the ones that we want to go in and pick up and join together. So what we're going to do is find that first stitch there, going in and picking up that stitch, and then finding the stitch that sits directly opposite that stitch, which is that one there. Once they've picked up, pull your yarn through and move on to the next stitch. So that's our next stitch there. So going in underneath that, and finding the next stitch on the other side and pulling your yarn through. So basically just whip stitching both ends together, going through those stitches to pick them up and secure them. So your work will not come undone. I'll do a couple more with you guys and then I will continue on and meet you at the end. But again, finding that next stitch, finding the one directly opposite, and pulling your yarn through. One more time, I will show you guys picking up that stitch, picking up that stitch, and pulling your yarn through. We're then just repeating that exact step all the way around until you are all the way back here where we started from. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off and I will meet you back here at the end. All right, so here I am back at the beginning. I have now joined all my stitches together. So you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Once you've done that, you can remove your yarn needle, we won't need that for now. If you've still got your other skein attached, please feel free to cut that off. But again, just leave an end just to be safe. The reason I leave that attached is just in case for any reason, the end that we left at the beginning is not long enough. At least then you've still got this attached as a backup. So anyway, we're finished with that. I'm happy with the length of that tail that we left at the beginning. And now what we're going to do is remove our waist yarn. So find the end of it. It should pull undone fairly easily. There shouldn't be a lot to it. Depending on which end will depend on the next step. So one end you'll find that will just unpull really, really easily. And the other end we do have to do a little bit of an extra step. So I'll just finish unpulling all of this and then I'll show you guys what we need to do. As you can see, this side is just pulling away really, really nicely and really easily. If you do find yours gets tangled or anything, please feel free to cut it off. You can just cut it straight off if you like, but I like to try and preserve the yarn because I do reuse it. So if I can help it, I try to not cut it, but sometimes it can't be helped. Like at the moment, it is a little bit tangled. I'm gonna have a play around with it, see if I can get it untangled. If not, I will probably just have to cut it. Okay, so I managed to get it untangled without cutting anything, which is great. So just throw that to the side for now. We're now going to work on this other side, which will be a little bit trickier to get off because you'll find that this has a string running through the stitches that has secured the, st the stitches basically. And that's just because 
one end is your cast on end and one end is your cast off edge. So anyway, what you're going to need to do is just spread the stitches out a little bit. You'll be able to see that piece of yarn that is running through them. It's just the end of yarn that you'll be able to pull on. All you need to do is just remove that from in under that top layer of stitches. And once you've removed that piece of yarn that was securing all the stitches, you'll then just be able to go in and easily unpull it just like we did with the other side. Okay, once you've done that, just remove your waist yarn, put that to the side. Now what we're going to do is find that end that we just used to secure our stitches, which is this one here. And then all you're going to do is pull that end and you'll find that it will cinch your beanie closed. Just be careful not to pull too tight that it's gonna break your yarn. Obviously we wanna keep that in one piece but just pull as securely as you can without breaking your yarn to cinch the top of your beanie. Obviously that's still got a little bit of a hole in it so it needs to go a little bit tighter. You may just need to have a little play around with it. But I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm going to pop a pom-pom on the top of mine anyway, so you won't be able to see that hole. But then once you've got it as tight as you are happy with, you're then going to take this other end of yarn that we've got here, and you're simply going to tie a nice tight knot to secure and keep your beanie closed. I do like a triple knot just to be safe. Just like that. I'm just gonna trim that off now. Leave a tail because we will need to sew in these ends. I'm now going to turn this inside out. So this will now be the outside of my beanie. Now obviously I still have to go in and sew in those ends that are on the inside, but you guys all know how to do that. I'm not gonna show you how to sew in ends. You then just roll up your brim if you want your brim rolled up like that. You could of course just leave it straight like that if you wanted a slouchy beanie. I like mine rolled up but this is your finished beanie. You could now go in and attach a pom-pom like I am going to do. I'm not going to show you guys how to make a pom-pom. I assume you probably already know but I am now going to go in and attach a pom-pom which will be in the same color as this tanny color. Okay guys, so I just realized, remember how I said earlier that we would go back and tighten up where we did our color changes? Well, I forgot to do that. So what I've done is I'm just pulling it through because we've already attached our beanie and the joins are now on the inside of the beanie. I've just found where that loose stitch was and I've just pulled it through. So obviously you would do this step before you join the top of your beanie. So as soon as you take it off your knitting machine, you would do this, but I forgot. So I'm doing it the hard way. But if you forget like me, I guess this is a good example. So you'll be able to see where the stitch is loose, but I'll just show you on the other side. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So here, for instance, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference in the stitch. So you'll know that that's where your join is. All I did was went in with my yarn needle and gently, because you don't want to pull anything undone, just have a play around until you can grab hold of that join so that's it there remember we did put a little loose um, knot in it so it will still be there so that's what's holding it in place but I'm just going to show you guys how to go about tightening it up so 
undo the knot that we did originally because that is not tight enough. You can leave the first knot in. So just pull that to tighten it up. I'm going to do another knot. And then all you do is thread both of these strands onto your yarn needle. And because this is a double layered beanie, all you're going to do is thread these strands in so they are in between the two layers. So you don't even have to really sew them in. It's more of a just putting them on the inside. And then once they're in there, you can kind of play around with it and you can just use your hands to pull it through so it disappears. So now you can see that that join, it's still a little bit noticeable, but unless you knew that it was there, you wouldn't even know the difference. You would just make that the back of the beanie if that's what you wanted. But then we're just going to do the exact same on the other side, we're just undoing one of those knots, pulling to tighten it up, popping another knot in there. It's nice and tight. And then again, we're just going to grab these two strands, pop them onto our yarn needle and just go in between the two layers of our beanie. And that's it. You would hardly even know that there is a join there. So again, you would do that step before you join your beanie together. It just makes it a lot easier. But again, if you've forgotten it like me, feel free to do it that way. So this is what our beanie looks like finished. Because it is a double layer, it is super duper warm. I like my beanies folded up personally. So I would wear mine like this, but you could of course wear yours down like that if you wanted it as a slouchy beanie, but I like mine rolled up with the cuff. And I've also just added a pom-pom to the top of mine. You could of course leave the pom-pom off, but all I did was made up a pom-pom using my large clover pom-pom maker and just sewed it onto the top of my beanie. This is such a great pattern if you're doing markets because it works up so, so quickly. I made this in like, what, half an hour? Probably not even. It is a great unisex pattern. You could definitely market these to men or women, um, just depending on what colors you use. You could, as I said, leave your pom-pom off if you prefer not to have a pom-pom. It is such a great versatile winter pattern. It is so nice and thick and squishy. It's such a great beanie. I cannot wait to wear this. But anyway, guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, as always, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. But until next time, I'll see you later. Stay safe, be kind, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.